critical limits and control measures come in your way.
Okay, we're up to principle number four. Principle number one was put the HACCP team together. Principle two was what are the critical control points where we can fix those hazards. Principle three was what's the critical limit by which we know if we hit it we have uh, fixed that problem, that hazard. And now number four is how do we know we hit that critical limit? We monitor. Monitoring is the act of observing, such as clear fish eyes, or measuring, such as 165, to help determine if critical limits are being met and maintained. You're assessing whether a critical control point is under control. So when you monitor, and if you hit the critical limit, where was that critical limit set? At the critical control point. So if you monitor and you hit the critical limit, then the CCP is under control. If you didn't hit the, si the critical limit, if the fish eyes are not clear, or if the temperature is not 165, it's 162, then the CCP is not under control. As long as the fish eyes are clear and the temperature is 165, then that CCP is under control. Monitoring is the act of observing making measurements to help determine if the critical limits are being met and maintained. Monitoring will identify when there's a loss of control. Loss of control means you did not hit the critical limit. Loss of control means there's bugs growing or there's dirt in the, um, in the, in the food. So that's loss of control. Or monitoring might show a trend toward loss of control. So the temperature on the serving line is going from 150 to 148 to 146 to 140. So it shows a gradual loss of control so corrective actions can be taken immediately and you can raise the temperature on the serving line as an example before it gets to uh, below 135. Monitoring must be done by an employee who is trained for that specific task being monitored. Who does the monitoring? Someone who is trained to do that. So taking the temperature of soup is pretty easy. But taking the temperature of a turkey, a whole turkey, is not. You have to make sure you um, don't hit the bone, right? So make, just make sure the person knows what they're doing. Sometimes people take a temperature, but they don't know what it's supposed to be. So they take it, they write it down, but they don't know if that's right or wrong. That I've seen that way more than a few times. The methods used to monitor must be based on the established critical limits. So how you monitor is based on what the critical limit is, such as for the critical limit of 145, you would monitor by taking the temperature. You wouldn't stare at the um, steak, you would take the temperature of it. If the critical limit is no dirt in the lettuce, you wouldn't take the temperature of the lettuce, you would look at the lettuce. Uh, pretty simple, but people tend to miss that question too, so make sure you got that. How you monitor must be based on the established critical limit. Once again, repeating myself, make sure we're keeping up as we go along here. Reviewing the principles. Principle one, we determined what the hazard was. Principle two, we determined where we're going to fix that hazard, called the critical control points. Principle three, we set the standard that said we have taken care of that hazard if we hit that standard or critical limit. And principle four, we monitored the standard or critical limit to make sure that we hit it. Every critical control point must have a critical limit. A hazard can't be controlled if you don't have a standard that says, if we do this, we got it. If you hit this, you're taking care of the hazard, such as 165 degrees, no dirt, less than four hours. Page 28 shows examples of critical limits.